Hi guys, welcome back for the next video. I hope you enjoyed the Tel Aviv Bethel Branch video as well as the price comparison video when planning this trip on your own. So this video will be about the Dead Sea and the 8 sites that I recommend you visit while you're in the area. I will also include some important tips at the end. As you can see in this quick screenshot, we will be visiting the left hand side of the Dead Sea the Israeli side and at the end of the video I will cover Jericho which is in Palestinian territory so please stick around for some important information. Okay here is our plan. Our plan has 15 stops on it because it includes places where you can get food and shop. Stop number one is at the northern end and as you progress and follow the route you will end up in the southern end. To get to the Dead Sea, you can take a city bus, but I don't really recommend it. The sites are far apart and it would be very difficult to walk or find a taxi. The best options are driving or with a tour group leaving from Jerusalem for just the day. That should cost about $112 with a company like Bain Harim and $82 per person with Abraham Tours. But please note that these tour groups do not include Qumran. They only include the Dead Sea, Masada, and En Gedi. Another option, if you don't have a car, is that once you are in Jerusalem, you can rent a car for a day or two to see all the sites that I will show you. Now the first one is Qumran National Park, which is 8 miles south of Jericho. This is the site where the first of the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in caves in 1947, and these proved that our copies of the scriptures are authentic. Next location, En Gedi. En Gedi. It is an area but also a national park. In the past, it served as one of the main places of refuge for David as he fled from Saul. When you arrive at En Gedi, it has two areas you can hike. The first one is short and easy, about 15 to 20 minutes at a slow pace, which takes you to this waterfall. There is another that's longer and that has a beautiful view, but we decided to skip it due to time. Next, we are on to Masada. Masada are ruins of a palace built by King Herod the Great. Now, it is the desert, and let me tell you, I am from Arizona, and even though we visited in the month of December, it was pretty toasty. There is no shade, so I recommend that you take water, snacks, a hat, some good walking shoes, and some sunscreen. I felt like we rushed through the ruins, and even that way, I think it took us at least two hours to get through it. Just something to keep in mind if you have kids. And on the way out, there is a restaurant by the gift shop if you are feeling hungry after all that walking. Next location is really only a photo opportunity. It is this sign. It looks pretty cool. So if you want to take a picture by this sign, the location is in my Google Maps link below. Okay, now off to our accommodations. This is Daniel Dead Sea Hotel. We absolutely love this place. It was beautiful. It was a close walk to the Dead Sea. And the staff was very friendly and the food was delicious. In 2019, we paid $202 for a room for two people and we booked it with uh, the option of breakfast included. Now there was an option for what they call a half board. I had no idea what this meant so I chose the cheaper option. Now let me tell you, this. it turns out, now that I understand this a little bit better, it turns out that a half board is your breakfast 
plus your dinner. So this is how it looks when you go to book a room. So when we arrived, we had just visited Masada and we were starving. There were no restaurants around. We actually went to the mall in the area and everything was expensive and honestly did not smell good. We ate a lot of snacks and went back to the hotel and then we got a whiff of a delicious smell. We located the source and it was the dinner buffet. I asked the price and it was $55 per person, so we did it. We paid $110 for two people. The best dinner we've ever had. We were stuffed and it was awesome. Come morning time, since breakfast was included, we headed out to the dining area and there was another buffet. Just as delicious, cappuccinos made to order. Alrighty, so here are the salt formations that are part of the stops. Then we are off to Lot's Wife Rock and Sodom Mountain Panorama. And these are all part of the Google Maps route I created and like I mentioned before, the link is below. Here are the current prices for the sites as of December 2022. For Masada, there was a deal going on when we arrived where if you purchased all three, the entrance, the video presentation, and cable car, it was cheaper. I think it was like 20 or $25. The boat ride um, to the Salt Islands, I'm still trying to locate the company that does this. And once I figure this out, I can make a short video and add it to the playlist. Now, the biggest cost is definitely the hotel, and I realize that it is a lot. For us, we decided to splurge since almost every day we were there in Israel, we ate falafel sandwiches. Here are some other sites that I added to the Google Maps routes. Um, you can save this on your own phone, and you can also create your own route on Google Maps using the names listed here. And I'd like to mention why I listed Kalia Beach and Nev Midbar. Now these two beaches are in the north part of the Dead Sea and this seems to be the area that has accessible mud so that you can have some fun and cover yourself with it. Now the southern part doesn't seem to have any easy to access um, like near the beach by the hotel. So most people seem to either go up north and pay for a mud beach for the day or the other option is you can buy some mud in a packet and use it while you're using um, the hotel beach. That's what we're going to be doing. And once you get to Israel, you can buy those mud packets for cheap. Now we are getting to the good part. What to spend your shekels on? Well, before you head out there, there's one important tip I have for you. 
do your research. Um, there is a company out there, Ahava, which we see here in America. Um, very good company, very good products. So research here in the U.S. before you head out which products you are interested before purchasing in Israel. That way you can price compare and make sure that you are getting a good deal. In my case, these are the two products that I'm going to be looking at whenever I'm out there. And I have price compared with Amazon and Ulta when they are on sale. Another tip that I have for you is to do your research and decide what type of mud mask you are looking for. There are different types. There are only some that can be used on your face, some that are used, uh, that are made to be used on your hair. Um, also, there is mud in soap bars and there is mud made for your body. And I do not recommend that you purchase any mud to bring back to the U.S. as a gift. It is just way too heavy. If you want to bring back a gift, I recommend you bringing back salt because it is a lot lighter and you can get very good deals. Now I will be showing you a couple of gifts that you can bring back for free, my friends, for free. Now these are called sea salt diamonds and you can find these in the mud and I'm going to show you a quick video of how they look when they're pulled out. And here's a screenshot of what the video is, the original video, so you guys can check it out. All right, another item that you can pick up for free are the sea salt crystals. And these are all at the bottom of the Dead Sea. Um, they're a little bit difficult to pick up because the water basically bounces you back out. So to grab it with your hand, it's kind of hard. You have to pull it towards you with your foot so that means you have to take off your shoe um, but it's doable guys and they're pretty cool everybody that I brought them back for they love them they were a big hit so I highly recommend these and I'm also going to be showing you up ahead um, some other items that are selling currently right now on Etsy um, just thought there were some good ideas of items that you can bring back and you can give to the friends. You can see here at the bottom right, um, it's the Dead Sea salt in a bottle. And I've seen those little bottles at the dollar store. So maybe bring back like a bag of the salt and then you make your own little bottles and label them. Here are some of the rocks. Um, we brought some of those back too and you guys are everywhere. You can see they're selling for $48. Um, it's a great gift. Here is some mud. Um, you can see here in the U.S. it's a lot more expensive. You can probably get that same amount of mud for maybe like $3 out there. So just to kind of give you guys an idea. And I love how they did these postings because they have the little bottle of whatever they are selling in front of the location of where they picked it from so I think that's a good idea I think I'm gonna do that too where I'm just gonna make a few of the bottles take the picture and then I'm gonna gift the little bottle with the picture of the location where it came from in Israel I love these I thought it was such a great idea you can fill them up with sea salt the sand and water and check it out, it's almost $30 on Etsy. Now on to the Palestinian territory, guys. These locations on your screen, so the good, uh, where the Good Samaritan parable was, um, Mount of Temptation, Elisha Spring, all of these, um, they look close, or some of these look very close to the Dead Sea, but they are in Palestinian territory. So you guys just remember that um, rental cars are not allowed. So even though it looks very close, the best uh, suggestion I have for you is to book a tour with Abraham Tours or the Bain Harim company um, and visit those sites with them. And the final tips things to buy and just tips for when you visit the Dead Sea. 
So it is highly recommended that you do not walk barefoot, do not buy flip-flops, look for water shoes when you visit the Dead Sea. And one thing that I just bought for our next trip is a floating neck pillow. Um, it was difficult for me to keep my ears out of the water. Um, so I decided that this time around I'm, I'm going to pick up one of these pillows and I will try it in my bathtub. I will tell you guys how that goes. And it is only $1.25. Also, don't forget, buy a mud pack just in case you can't find some mud at the beach. That way you don't have to pay for a mud beach. Don't forget a towel. And your tips, okay, is do not, whatever you do, do not shave 24 hours before or less than 24 hours before going to the beach because your legs or your face or your armpits will burn trust me and the last one is don't splash any water on your face so but that's all I have for you guys let me know what you think if there's anything that you feel I didn't cover or that you want me to look into let me know and I will gladly do it take care see you next time